Well, welcome back to base camp, WNC. Well, it's a Tuesday morning. It rained Saturday and Sunday and Monday. You'll probably see some pictures of the aisles here with water in them. But harvest time starting besides the strawberries. This is, if I remember correctly, we have bok choy, bok min, and black Russian kale right here. And you can see they've been cutting some heads off. We have some up there at the stand I'll have to show you. And then right on down here, we start all the bok choy. Bok choy been growing for quite a while. Bok min is something we just started. And really started a couple years ago with this black Russian kale. The chef seemed to like it quite a bit. But looking back over here, this next section here is all the cauliflower. And then we start on broccoli all up in there. Hopefully it don't fade out. This is first thing in the morning. This is the next whole plant in the broccoli. And then down there on the lower end right there is a bunch of melons and all that we're planting. And that kind of finished this field up. Let me take you to the other end of the field and show you some stuff. Well, let me get some close-up shots of this stuff here. Let me show you this bok choy. Well, that right there is a bok choy. It's uh, lighter green, a little bit more, almost like cabbage. It's just uh, a little tender, not quite as hard. More like a romaine lettuce standing kind of growing thing. Very nice crop to grow. This is black Russian kale. You can see right there at the end. Not rabbit damage or anything like that. That right there is a, they're starting to pick it. And there's our nemesis on this place right here. This is a smart weed. And that seems, we seem to have a fair amount of that from time to time. We can't get, get it right out of here. But this is all of it. And then right across the aisle here is this little plant. This is Bach Min, if I am got that correct. And it's, uh, once again, it's another Chinese cabbage, but it's just a little bit lighter. It's almost between a cabbage and a lettuce, almost. But a very good crop, grows real good. Um, really have no pest or problems in this thing. I mean, it was set out in February, 1st of March. It is a cool weather crop. Um... No real bug problems or anything else yet. Um, mainly because kind of get it planted when it really should be planted. It's not something that you wait till summertime to plant. It is a cool weather crop. It's just, that's why it's here with all the Brussels sprouts and cauliflower and cabbage and broccoli and that's the time to grow it. Well, we're here in the bicolor corn patch I want to show you somewhat of a disaster. This right here is the bicolor we planted and started coming up and it was a little bit early and it was kind of cold on it. But as you can tell, we get like five or six plants and then a three foot skip and five or six plants and three foot skip. Well, the planter had to go back to John Deere and they said there was a bunch of different wrong stuff in there with the sunflower seed finger pickup. $800, $200, $400 a row, $800 later, they put back the original thing, which was all the corn plates that they said shouldn't be in there, and they're all in there. And um, hopefully they're going to buy the other ones back from us. But uh, not everything works out all the time. This is a new planter. So, we have this one field of bicolor, and this is the only place we could put the bicolor so it doesn't cross-pollinate. So, we're going to plant about three more fields of plain old white corn, and hopefully this stuff will germinate a little bit. There's nothing wrong with the germination of the seed at the planter. The planter just wasn't putting the seed out correctly. So, when you do something unproven, you learn to live with it, so... We figured it's too late to try to replant it, so Walter decided he's just going to take what he gets and put it down as a learning lesson. So you end up with them things all the time. 
show you an overview of it. That broccoli I've been watching there right now is about 18 inches tall now. And then there's the broccoli, the cauliflower, and the bok choy and mint all the way down the other end of that field. It's been down to as low as 38 degrees here. It's been getting kind of cool. Yesterday got all the way up to about 44. It was kind of cool. It's been raining the last couple of days. They're calling for 30-40% chance of rain today. So you get what you get. Well, I wanted to bring you up to date. Today's Tuesday was supposed to start the next six weeks. There's three to four school groups a week coming in. We set this little classroom up and they go over all over a little bit of agriculture for them. Mostly uh, elementary and middle school kids. Um, Friday, the last Friday of spring break, we had to shut the farm down. The uh, fields were picked over pretty heavy. We averaged between 160 and 350 people a day picking in the fields. And uh, I don't think that was near as bad as the kids and the people trampling over the plants and walking on top of the beds and stomping things and pulling half the plants out. So we took Friday down and Saturday it rained. So Monday they picked, I don't know, something like 1,600 gallons of strawberries to get the fields caught up. I guess we probably shouldn't have shut down Friday, but you do what you do. Let me take you in the greenhouse because if the rain holds off, Walter wants to go ahead and finish planting a bunch of tomato plants. He's going to try to sneak them in today. Let me show you one more update of them things before they're gone. Well, this will be the first planting of tomatoes going in. These right here are the ones I've been watching. These are Brandywine tomatoes. It's a heritage variety. And they are coming up out of the trees fine, so... Walter wants to try to be in this school group all canceled today. We figure that he wants to try to get this stuff done. They're pushing about four inches tall, five inches tall. That's all the bigger they are when we set them out. Um, everything from cherry tomatoes and heritage tomatoes and production tomatoes. Um, a little bit of squash left and melons. That'll be uh, fill-ins for anything that got missed and whatnot. A little bit of zinnias and all left that need to be transplanted. He swears he's going to try to get them peppers start to plant peppers. I don't see how. I don't quite think they're big enough. I think that'll be another week. And let me show you this uh, crop here in the back end. Three, two, one. Well, this is one house of all this okra. And I tried to pull some out, and I believe... Well, it's going to be disappointed. I, I think we're going to have to wait another week on getting them things in the ground. They ain't not quite doing. The boss lady Xenia's here, though. This is her cut flyer things the girls like to do at the farmer's markets. I believe he'll be able to sneak them in. They got a good root ball on them. He wants to get them things up and going. They don't take too long. Thank you for watching, and as usual, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it. We're going to keep things going, and uh, I'll keep showing you some updates of the farm, uh, some growing techniques. We're getting ready to start seeding the next whole run of uh, the next bunch of plants that will have to go in, uh, the tomatoes and some more okra. There will be a few more plantings of 15,000 each okra. Um, We'll be getting ready. We got three, field, three or four fields of sweet corn to plant. We're gonna ride along, well, ride along on the planter, and we're gonna start getting into beans and a whole bunch of other stuff that we direct seed right in. But as usual, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. I see we're up to 70, about 75 or 76 subscribers. We're just moving right along. But I'm here trying to help people. If you got any questions or comments, please leave a question. Um, if I can help you in any way, pot and mixes or controls or anything, let me know. Talk to you later. Thank you for watching.